Now, bad news for Detroit. The U.S. federal judge has formally declared Detroit bankrupt in the largest ever city bankruptcy. The city is more than $18 billion in debt. This landmark ruling clears the way for cuts to city worker pensions and retirement benefits. And it also sets a precedent for potential losses to the city's bondholders. Rosa Kazan joins us live in Detroit. Rosa. Well, Michelle, ever since Detroit filed for bankruptcy protection in July, city workers such as police officers and firefighters, past and present, have been trying to stop the proceedings because what this means, as you said, they could lose some of their pensions and some of their health care benefits. So it was up to federal judge Stephen Rhodes to hear about the both sides and decide whether or not Detroit was indeed eligible for bankruptcy protection, whether or not it negotiated in good faith, whether it made an effort to reach a deal, and whether or not it was even realistic to reach a settlement with its 100,000 estimated creditors. What do we want? When do we want it? The judge hadn't announced his decision yet, but the protest had already begun. Under the scrutiny of the national and global media, their message was loud and clear. Stop the proceedings for Detroit's bankruptcy the largest municipal bankruptcy in U.S. history. And that's because a bankruptcy could allow Detroit to cut pensions for retired city workers like Angeles Hunt. I haven't even thought that far yet. I don't even want to think about it, because even one penny is too much. Retired city employees, police and firefighter unions argued the city rushed to file for bankruptcy without trying to find another solution. But Judge Stephen Rhodes and negotiations were done in good faith, and Detroit is eligible for bankruptcy protection. The ruling has just been announced here outside the courthouse, and these protesters are really angry. They think it's a travesty of justice, and they're calling the decision illegal. Brenda Goss Andrews, the head of the Retired Detroit Police Members Association, says the fight has just begun. People have worked, and we have earned these pensions for 25 and 30 years. But with $18 billion in debt, the city says it simply cannot pay its bills. Once the symbol of America's industrial might and the birthplace of the U.S. auto industry, Detroit is now struggling to survive. Its population is less than half what it once was, and nearly 80,000 abandoned buildings blight the city. The spokesman for Detroit's emergency manager says going ahead with the bankruptcy could give the city a fresh start. It gives it a break from its, from its crushing debt. It allows us to find its path forward without having to constantly be servicing that crushing debt, which was at the, at the detriment of services. But attorneys for Detroit's retired city workers say the ruling is a step in the wrong direction. I think it sends a, a troubling message um, that there's no guarantees anymore, even it's fr from your local or state government. If you can't trust your government in, in this country, who can you trust? The unions and retirees are promising to appeal. The city hopes to present a restructuring plan by the end of the year. She actually was supposed to pick up for the question. Well, Michelle, um, as we heard there, the city workers are really angry. And what a Judge uh, Stephen Rhodes said, um, Detroit, it was clear that Detroit is insolvent. You know, it needs help. And uh, this is an opportunity for the city to make a fresh start. But it is an alarming ruling because it means that um, uh, city workers m may lose some of their pensions and health care benefits. But the judge said, uh, you know, Detroit really needed help and it cited some very grim statistics. It said the unemployment employment last year was 18.3 percent. That's, you know, more than double than the national average. It also said, four, he also said 40 percent of street lights in Detroit weren't uh, working. Up to uh, 14 of the city's 36 ambulances were actually in service. Uh, you know, police response was lower than the national uh, level because of lower police staffing. So it said there was a lot of problems. And if Detroit was required to, uh, you know, continue paying its uh, debt and meeting its debt obligations, that the safety and the well-being of its residents was going to be further endangered and it was going to be just bad for the city overall. So Rosa, what were some of the arguments that the judge used to support the court's decision? 
Well, like um, I said, that it was uh, the fact that Detroit was really doing just simply really badly in terms of providing the most basic services for its residents. Uh, you know, the judge said that it's true that Detroit, uh, you know, the city of Detroit did not um, have enough time, maybe did not give enough time to the other party to reach a deal. But it said there was, uh, you know, it was just simply unrealistic, impractical to expect that Detroit could reach a, a settlement with uh, some uh, hundred thousand creditors that's the estimated number of the creditors that Detroit has so those objecting parties the unions and the creditors what were some of the measures that the objecting parties were calling for well, some of the retirees that I spoke to and city workers, they were saying, you know, why should we um, see our pensions cut? Why should we lose our benefits when Detroit has assets that it can monetize? And, uh, you know, what they had in mind, a lot of them said, was the uh, was Detroit's art collection. Uh, Detroit Institute of Arts has uh, really gathered a very impressive collection of 20th century art. It includes Matisse, Van Gogh, Diego Rivera, and they were saying, you know, why not sell them? Why not get some money that way? Am I on? All right. Well, Rosa. With regards to where things stand now, the immediately after the ruling, Detroit's largest public workers union, the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employers, said that they will appeal. So how likely is it that this appeal will be successful? Um, you know, Michelle, as with this ruling that we were expecting today, it, uh, you know, everyone pretty much expected that the judge was going to say, uh, yes, Detroit is eligible to continue with its bankruptcy proceedings and it is still unlikely you know many people here expect that it's unlikely that um, you know this will go the other way but what this does it did send a message and and judge Rhodes he said you know I don't want the city to look at this ruling and to think that's it you know we can go ahead and we can cut the pensions we can cut the benefits you know he wants I he said that I want you to go back to the negotiating table and to really try to reach an agreement and to you know find a way to not affect at that much the the people the workers who have been you know paying their um, their uh, pension payments uh, you know while they were working they've been making their contributions and you know now they're facing uh, you know having to live on maybe several hundred of dollars a month well Rosa it is indeed a very dire situation many are saying that the appeal would simply drag out the process and make the bankruptcy, which is inevitable, just take longer to kick in. And, and in the meantime, as you mentioned there, uh, the, the U.S. bankruptcy judge Stephen Rhodes said that the services were terrible. 48% of the city streetlights weren't working in 2013. The average police time, 58 minutes to respond, opposed to the national average of 11 minutes. So is it believed that declaring bankruptcy will help the city in terms of these services or make things worse? Well, uh, that's actually what, uh, you know, the city is saying, what the office of the emergency manager, Kevin Orr, is saying. You know, finally, now we don't have to be facing, you know, this crushing debt that has that has been, uh, you know, diverting our attention from providing the services to our residents. You know, that's what their argument is, that finally we can go back to restoring this uh, badly needed services and also to attracting businesses. You know, maybe this also sends a good message to the business community, to the investors community, that, you know, Detroit now is going to sort out its finances eventually. It will come out with a restructuring plan and, you know, it may still be a good place to come and, and invest and uh, set up businesses and as we know just uh, um, last week I believe uh, Warren Buffett said that he still believes in Detroit you know the uh, uh, financial right and Rosa of Detroit's three big automakers Chrysler GM and Ford still very well, doing very well they've emerged from bankruptcy and in fact they had very solid auto sales numbers thanks so much Rosa Kazan live for us in Detroit